Hello ladies and gentlemen. This video tutorial is my Christmas greeting to the App Inventor community in the form of a tutorial, how I propose. This will be a tutorial on how to create a Christmas greeting or a Christmas card for your Android phone owning friends. I have already built it so I'm going to do this in a slightly different way. I'm going to walk you through building this and the logic without actually building it. That will keep the time of this tutorial down and I'll provide the source and the file uh, so you can see and customize this. What I've done here is I have put in one vertical arrangement. I have put in a label at the top of that vertical arrangement. You can see it there. It's empty. No text set the font size a little bit large, 25. I've also put in a button, a large button. I chose a button because I can set both the text on that button and the image on that button for interactivity. You'll see how that works. I set that button to fill parent, of course setting the vertical arrangement to fill parent as well. I have placed a label at the bottom for more text and I've taken the text out of that set that text color to yellow on both of those labels as well to show up nicely against my black background. Now, I have also put in a timer called a rotate timer, a timer called a close timer, and a timer called an open timer. You'll see that we use these to create animation for the pages of our greeting card. This will be a good learning experience for learning how to create some quasi animation, uh, frame by frame type of animation in your applications. All right, I've also uploaded four appropriate pictures from my own collection of uh, amateur photography um, relevant to the greeting and to my family. I've also uploaded a um, royalty free a track of Silent Night on a classical guitar. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Not a lot of complexity here. I want to point out that my rotate timer I have set to 5,000 milliseconds. That basically gives me five seconds between each picture or page of my greeting. You'll see how that works in just a minute. Now these close and open timer I have an inter to at an interval of 10 milliseconds and you'll see how I use these two to animate my button in just a second. Let's switch over to the blocks editor and I'm going to walk you through the logic of how I built this application. First, the first thing I did was define two lists. The first list here was variable, uh, a variable list called Christmas message and I put the elements of my Christmas message in, in reality, the first part of this, I ended up moving down here to screen initialize, where at the uh, top label, I put a holiday message, and at the bottom uh, label, I put as the snow falls, and then the sentence continue, will continue here, and you warm your heart for holiday, our family extends our love and goodwill to you and your family. So these are elements of the message in my greeting card. I also made a list of my images, one through four here. It is really simple for me to uh, animate because I know that in image one is at index one, image two is at index two, etc. So that made it just easy for me. I also knew I was going to need to keep track of the image number and keep track of the message number that was currently being displayed. So I created two variables, image number and message number. Uh, and initialized image number to one, initialized uh, message number to zero. Then, in my screen initialized, I said, uh, start that player, which I think I forgot to t show you, I added. I added a player here to play my MP3. So I started that player, which will start the ambient music, and then I call a procedure. I've defined three procedures. The first procedure is called image rotate. It will rotate the images the next two procedures will animate that button but calling the image rotate procedure starts the process in the screen one initialize I also set the top text and the bottom text with my first two messages a holiday message and as the snow falls 
and then of course uh, you'll see that we'll increment those labels with further text. All right, let's follow the flow of this program from start to finish. The screen initialize, screen one initialize event starts the player, which I've already defined, defined the source for in the App Inventor interface here, my Silent Night MP3, and it calls the procedure. It also sets that top text to a holiday message. It's that top label. And the label bottom to as the snow falls. It also initializes my image with the first JPEG, which is why we initialize the variable with the number one, because we're at image one. Alright, so it called image rotate. What does image rotate do? Image rotate in fact, all of these procedures use something called delayed processing. So each procedure will call a timer that will do the business uh, of the procedure. And the way we do that is we disable all of those timers and then we use the enable, the timer enable, to enable the timer so it fires once and then we make the timer disable itself here. You'll see that each of these procedures do that here. Here we the open timer enables the time the the slide open procedure enables the open timer and then the open timer actually disables itself. And we see the uh, slide close enables the close timer and the close timer disables itself. So let's look at what happens here. So uh, the procedure image rotate enables the rotate timer. The rotate timer asks the question, uh, have we reached the last image yet? We know the last image is image four here. So it says, is the global var image number, remember that's this tracking variable here, has it reached four yet? Well, if it has reached four, we're at the end. Go ahead and print onto the button image. Uh, Merry Christmas and God bless you. That's the final message that will be printed on that button. Otherwise, if we haven't reached the end yet, go ahead and call uh, process the procedure slide close and disable this timer. So what does the procedure slide close do? Well, it's actually the heavy duty workhorse. Let's go down here to the procedure slide close. Immediately, the procedure slide, clo slide close says if the width of the button is less than or equal to 10, then that means where we have uh, s uh, slid the image close and we want to change the image and call the slide open. But if that image is at its full width, that's not what we're going to do. Instead, we'll enable the close timer timer enabled. What does that do? Well, the close timer timer enabled starts um, closing the image, making the uh, button narrower. So what it does is it sets the button image width to the current width of the button minus five pixels then disables the timer and then calls that slide procedure again the slide close so the the thing asks are do we have this image all the way down to 10 pixels yet no well go back enable that clock again um, wait 10 milliseconds and then decrease it by five and keep going back and forth until the width of the button is equal to or less than uh, five. When it reaches that narrow strip, then change the text in that bottom label to the next message. And the way we do that is we use the select list item from the var Christmas message list. Remember, that's our list up here we made of messages. And we say the one we want to, to display is whatever the var message number variable is plus one. So in other words, whatever is in the var message number, then uh, give us one more than that. So if the index, 
if the number here is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, that will give us the first index item here. So we'll change that bottom label to, and you warm your heart for holiday. And then you'll see down here, we will increment that variable that's keeping track here, plus 1, so that this variable is always going up each time we change that message. We do the exact same thing with the image on the button. We say change the button image once we have narrowed that button down so that it's not visible. Change that button image source to an index from that list of images. So here's our list of images, JPEG 1, 2, and 3. We know that it's currently on JPEG 1 because that's what we started with. So we'll set the uh, image then to 1, which is the var image number, plus 1, which is 2. So it will set the source to the index position 2 in the var images, which is 2.jpg. And then we do the same thing with that variable that's tracking the image number. We actually say, okay, take, since we went ahead and changed the image, let's change the variable uh, to whatever is currently in it plus 1. So if it starts at 1, then it will increment to 2. And the next time that we close this down, this button down, then we'll increment it to 3 because we changed the image to 3. And then, um, after we close this button down and we increment both our variables, then we call the procedure slide open. Well, slide open basically does the exact opposite of what slide close did. It says, does the button, does the width of the button currently equal to or greater than the screen width? If it is, then start this whole procedure over again by calling image rotate. But if we're not yet re rewiden that button out to its full width then call the timer open timer well, the open timer does exactly the opposite of what the close timer does it increases the width of the button by six pixels so whatever the button image uh, width currently is plus six pixels set that width and then disable the timer and then call the slide open procedure again. So this will bounce back and forth between the procedure and the timer, enabling the timer, increasing by six pixels every 10 milliseconds. So what that will do then is slowly expand that button out to the full width of the screen. At which point, this question here, is the button image width the full width of the screen? Yes it is. Call image rotate. And we go back here. And remember, image rotate calls this rotate timer, which asks the question, have we gone through all the images yet? If we have, then set the text of the button to this final message. All right. I think the only thing that I have not pointed out is that um, initially I cleared, you know, I set the message in screen one, initialize. I set that top label text to a holiday message. Well, I just needed to get rid of that for the rest of the message. So I let the proc image rotate the first time it was called and every other time it was called. Just clear out that label because I don't want, I don't want to use it again. It's kind of a lazy way to do that. In fact, there's a lot of optimization that could be done to this. But really, the learning here is learning how to uh, animate elements. You don't have to do this with just buttons. This process where I'm widening the image out and narrowing it back down with two timers and two procedures, this is something you can use with images, with buttons, with canvases, with any component that has a width or a height value. So let's see what happens um, with our uh, application when we connect to the device and see what happens. Let's walk back through this while that's connecting to the emulator. We had two variables. Those two variables have our holiday message and the pictures for our greeting card. We also have two variables to track which image is currently being displayed and which message is currently being displayed. Our screen initializes everything and starts the pretty music. And here's what that should look like. We initialize the image and our two messages. 
And then when we begin to decrease the size of that button, looks like it's collapsing. And we expand out after we change the source to the next image. Once again, since it expanded all the way, it started collapsing, change the source, expand back out. You'll also see the message is changing at the bottom. So we slide it close and we slide it back open. Guys, I truly wish each and every one of you a very happy holiday season. May God bless you and may your holidays be rich and fulfilling and full of many awesome apps. Merry Christmas.